We're live from the 2019 Wolfram Technology Conference. I'm Sylvia Haas and I do all the social media for Wolfram Research. And I am the co-host Shruti Ponce and I was a Wolfram student or a student at the Wolfram summer camp this year. Today we have Suba Thomas um, who is a software engineer at Wolfram and he will be talking to us about his microcontroller kit. So, um, what do you do at Wolfram, and what are you doing at the conference? Yeah, so I'm, I'm as you said, a software engineer in the algorithms R&D. I worked uh, in the areas of control systems and uh, microcontrollers. So, in control systems, I primarily focused on classical control systems and nonlinear control systems. I've been involved in all the other areas as well. So, my work in the microcontrollers has now crystallized into what is now the microcontroller kit. So can you tell us a little bit more about the microcontroller kit? Yeah. So the microcontroller kit is a new feature that we released in version 12. So it automates the generation and deployment of code to microcontrollers. So if you have a controller or a filter in the Wolfram language, or maybe it's a model for har hardware in the loop simulation, or it's some data acquisition code, you need not manually write the equivalent microcontroller code. You can go directly from the Wolfram language to deployed code on the microcontroller. Awesome. Can you show us an example? All right, sure. So, so we're here, I have a, an uh, Atmega 168 microcontroller. So this one is the smaller sibling of the Atmega 328, which is typically on, which is on the Arduino Uno. So, and what I have here is a voltage regulator. It makes sure that this microcontroller is getting a constant and clean 5 volt voltage supply. Over here, so, so the microcontroller has a notch here. So this is how we start con uh, co counting the pins. So it has 14 on this side and 14, 28 pins in a dual inline package. So in, on that pin, if you count backwards, that's pin 24. And you see this green wire snaking back. I have this uh, potentiometer connected there. Okay, so this is an analog input to this microcontroller. And on, uh, on this pin 15, I have an LED connected. So I want to adjust the brightness of this LED using this potentiometer. Okay, so, okay. That, so that's what I want to do. Okay, so let's, let's, let me see. Okay, let's look at the Wolfram language code for that. So I have this transfer function model. So but what this does is, on, on this board, I just want to take the input and send it out to the output. So it's a constant gain one. In case you're not familiar with it, you can see what it does. So whatever random signal I give, I just create a list of random integers. The same input, if the input is, uh, say, 60, it's going to give a 60 output. So basically, that's the core code that's going to now, that I'm going to deploy on that microcontroller. Then I get to the microcontroller specifications itself. It's an Atmega 168 28-pin dual inline package uh, microcontroller. The input is on pin 24, and it's a type analog input. The output is on pin 15, and it's also an analog output. And this is the sampling period or the frequency. We want to sample it at the appropriate time, or else you'll see it blinking. It needs to be really fast. So the way I've set it up is, oh, I should actually evaluate that first. So this microcontroller has a clock of one megahertz. So the sampling period I use is one fourth of that. So it's, it's pretty fast. And now I'm going to deploy it. And now I'm using this external programmer. This is the USB ASB programmer. And that's what I have here, external programmer going to USB ASB. So this I, this I wired to the, the programming pins of the of the microcontroller. And this end I'm going to stick. So that one I'm going to stick into my USB port. And then I'm going to power this guy. Okay. So now I'm going to deploy this code. So we should, yeah, see now it's going to send this. Okay, so now you see two LEDs. That means it has generated the source code. It has generated the source code and deployed it. So I have it at so based on the analog input, it dims and and brightens. So this is a, a basic awesome. ex example. And yeah, so the whole idea is now I can unplug this, and now this is a completely standalone 
microcontroller. So we awesome. took that Wolfram code and from there we went directly onto the onto the microcontroller. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah, so this is a gist of what the microcontroller kit does. Take Wolfram language code and deploy it in, onto standalone microcontrollers. So what are you seeing as like the applications for this? Yeah, so so the applications are in the area of, uh, so if you have a controller that you want to deploy, or you have a filter from signal processing, or if you have uh, a model for hardware in the loop simulation, or you want to do data acquisition. So all these areas, this, this is relevant. Because when we design the controller, we don't have to then uh, go and write the code again. We do the design and we deploy it and typically we don't get the design right the first time so we can it and so this uh, this functionality provides a very uh, uh, very handy uh, way to to go about doing the design and deploying it so what are your future pr plans for this project yeah so we want to add uh, uh, as many microcontrollers as possible and so we are getting back uh, user feedback and seeing how to prioritize what we want to develop next and we're also creating more application yeah. examples so people can see how to use this in their respective areas. So if people want to learn more, where can they learn about that? Yeah, so, so we created, uh, yeah, so, for that. so we have this uh, feature page for version 12. Okay, so th this is like a 10,000 foot view, it's a summary which gives uh, all the various features of this microcontroller kit. If they want to go into more depth, they have this, this guide page, which is also in product, and it has the, it has the function, microcontroller embed code, we just have one main function. So if you go to that ref page, they can, so each one of this feature, we have an example explaining, explaining how they can use it. If they want to use digital input, there, there's the schematic and detailed code, how to see, how to get a, go about doing that. If they want to go into more detail, we have tutorials, which again explains this in even more details than in more detail than that basic example. And then we have application examples that we put in here. Right, where people can look at these application examples and get started. So this is both online and also in product. So cool. I see you have another board with you. Yes. Yeah, is this so, another example? Yeah, so this one is what uh, I'm going to present at my talk uh, later later this week. So, so, for, yeah, so what, what this is... Let me get this guy out of the way. So what this is is a color sensor. And uh, over here you see this array. So that is a array of photodiodes. So some of the diodes are clear, some of them are red filtered, some of them are blue, and some of them are green filtered. So depending on the light that, fall, that, uh, that uh, falls on it, it's going to generate current. And for a preset amount of time, we, we add those currents. And that's going to give a measure of how much red, green, or blue fall or clear falls on the sensor. Okay. Yeah, so we first deploy code, and then we can actually see what, what colors it's, it's seeing. So let's let me go back here. So this is the code. So I start. So again over here I have this um, nonlinear. So this is an input-output model. Earlier we had transfer function model. So these are the three in, four inputs that are coming in: the clear channel, the red, the raw red value, the raw green, and the raw blue value. Okay. okay if it's below a certain threshold, that means it's not seeing anything. We're just going to assume it's black. It's okay. Not, yeah. Then otherwise we just do the amount of red divided by the clear signal that will give you the, the red content in the color. Okay. And so I, there are various ways you can do it and that's what I'm going to be presenting at, the, at, the, at my talk. But here this is just one way. I'm going to use a, a library that's provided by Adafruit okay. from, from whom I got this sensor. So when I say the location of the library, what are the header files to include, then I'm going to create this Adafruit TCS34725 object. I'm creating, I said that integration time, I'm going to specify how much time I want it to be integrated, what is the gain of that. And then now I'm going to begin, when this code is deployed here, it's going to now, this microcontroller, when that code is deployed onto this microcontroller, it's going to start communicating to this device. And this is, I, I forgot to mention, this is an I2C device, so it just uses two wires to communicate and these two are just the power lines. Okay. So this is, the next piece of code is what is running in a loop. 
So these are the raw red, raw green, raw blue, and the clear values. So I use this function get raw data to get it. So the first one is the clear, and then I get the red, green, and blue. And then the output, the three output, the red, green, and blue values, I send it back from the microcontroller over serial. Okay, and then I'm going to use the device framework to actually read those serial values. Okay, so, so we're just sending the sensor data back to the computer. Yeah. So once we deploy this code, as before, it can be standalone, and then any other microcontroller with serial connection can read that data. We can use Arduino to read it or another program like Screen to read that data. Okay. So in here we are using we, we use uh, the language again. So this is the complete microcontroller specification. And now let me deploy the code. Can I plug this one? Yeah. So now, okay, now let me do this. Let me see what's going on. Okay, so it lit up okay. So now I'm going to now I have a function that opens and reads. You see now it's not seeing anything. Okay, so all the red, green and blue are Let's get the whole thing okay. Okay, so then I, I have some mini red boards here. So if I bring the red one, you see, so what so the... it's all red uh, with a little bit of... Green yeah, so the green, red is predominant and then there is some... So if, you, if I pick something like in yellow, you'll see again that the red and, and the green and then there's a little bit of blue. Stuff like that. Yeah, then That's I can so bring cool. then I can bring an all white and in this case you see it has equal content of so all of them. Yeah, it's equal red, green and blue and this is a black here, so it's gonna not see anything. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. this, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so there are various ways to do it and I've not got a chance to talk much about uh, I squared C in my in my presentations on the microcontroller kit, so I'm gonna take this opportunity at this conference to talk about that. That's awesome. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add? No, nothing in particular. All right. Thank you so much for coming in and talking with us. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. you.